effect, my pleasure to introduce Professor Antonia Assin, Assin, Assin. Um, from the Institute of uh, Photonic Studies. He works in quantum cryptography and entanglement theory. Anyway, he will explain to us what he's doing. And he's going to talk about true quantum randomness. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, yes, my name is Antonio Cine. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm an ICREA professor. ICREA is a Catalan um, uh, institution which uh, founds, uh, which contracts people to make research in Catalan institutions. So I'm an ICREA professor working at ICFO, the Institute of Photonic Sciences, in Bar here in Barcelona. Okay. So what I'm going to tell you about is about a, a recent uh, work that uh, we made in collaboration with several people, but. I'm mostly going to focus on the theoretical ideas that uh, uh, I developed together with uh, two colleagues in, uh, in Brussels, Seth Massar and Stefano Pironio. And it's about somehow the, how you can certify the presence of true quantum randomness. Okay? But let me just start by saying whether randomness exists in our, I mean, from a physics point of view, whether randomness exists in our macroscopic world. Okay? So I'm a physicist, I'm going to say what we know, what we can say from, uh, from a physics point of view. Okay? So, uh, in our macroscopic world, I mean, there is no such a thing as true randomness, okay? So whatever we see which uh, behaves in a random way, according to the theory, is just because either we had some imperfections in the preparation of the system, or we have some ignorance, okay? So the typical example is the roulette, okay? If you play roulette, well, there is some randomness there, okay? But if you are so good that you can really know the, you have a perfect model for the roulette, and you can really um, have a, a a perfect knowledge of the initial position and speed of the particle, you can predict what the particle is going to finish, okay? And you can win the roulette. What this means simply is that, I mean, randomness is just, let's say, a, a consequence of our limitations, okay? In the predictability or in the knowledge of the initial conditions of the system. And perhaps this is, uh, and so the theory does not incorporate any form of randomness. There is no intrinsic randomness uh, to the theory, okay? It's just, I mean, just limitations of, in the observations. And this is, I mean, there is a famous quote by Laplace, who was a, a defender of randomness, where, I mean, okay, if you spend some time reading, basically what he says is that if you have uh, enough computational power to predict the initial position of the particles and interactions among them, you can predict what is going to happen in the future and what happened before, okay? So you can predict everything uh, using the classical theory. Okay, so far so good. So <coughs> what we want to see is what happens when we move to the macroscopic world, okay? So I want to make this transition and see what happens uh, uh, in, in the case of randomness. And actually, well, we know that uh, after many years, we know that when you go to the microscopic world, the atomic particles and, 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 and light at the photonic level, so when you have very weak pulses of light, you have to use your uh, theoretical description and you have to take quantum physics. Okay? So you have to describe what's going on with a new theory. And in this new theory, there appears to be a, an intrinsic form of randomness. Okay, and perhaps the most uh, paradigmatic example is uh, uh, happens when you take two two quantum particles, and they are created in something that is called an entangled state. Okay, and uh, I mean I'm not going to say what an entangled state. I mean what the the equation that describes an entangled state. Okay, but if you want to have a, an analogy, I think the best analogy is given by these two uh, dice. Okay, so you have these two dice that are you can put them in very distant locations, and what happens is that if I, I'm here in my location and I throw my dice, I will see that the result is perfectly random, like a normal dice, okay? And uh, there is another dice here, and another player who is throwing the dice, and the results are also always completely random. They look completely random locally for that observer and for this observer, okay? But what happens is that whenever that observer gets a three, this observer gets a three. It's two, two, five, five, okay? So the results are perfectly correlated. So there is some uh, local randomness in the, in the dice, but there is some uh, agreement at the, at the distance, okay? So these two things are, in a way, unsatisfactory, okay? Because somehow the particles, no matter how distant they are, they agree, okay? So they seem to communicate, and moreover, they behave randomly, locally, okay? And this is perhaps why uh, in '35, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen wrote an article suggesting that there should be another theory where these effects are explained without any uh, randomness and action at a distance, okay? I mean, Einstein really disliked the idea that 
things happen randomly, and moreover, what I do here seems to have an immediate influence with what happens here. Okay, so this is like information propagating instantaneously from one place to the other. Okay, but this is what happens. Okay, so what Einstein somehow you you know these famous sentences by Einstein, I guess, well, because that not, does not play dice. Okay, but I mean, my understanding of these sentences is that Einstein wanted to have a model where you don't have this randomness. Okay, so you have another theory where randomness does not appear. So I would say his objective was simply uh, to replace the randomness that we see in quantum theory by the randomness like the one we have in our classical world. Okay, he, w he was not meaning that quantum theory was incorrect. I mean, I mean the theory is very good predicting what ha what's happening in the macroscopic world. Okay, so the, his, he didn't want probably to falsify the theory experimentally, but he wanted to construct another theory where the randomness was simply a consequence of uh, lack of knowledge. Okay, so in quantum mechanics, if you give me, uh, you want to predict something, the best I can do is give you probabilities. And he thought that maybe this uh, fact was simply because there was a better theory, more complete, where there were some variables that are unknown of, to quantum theory, and it was this ignorance of these variables that was responsible of the randomness seen in quantum mechanics. Okay, so there was a finer theory with other variables, such that knowing these variables, the quantum randomness, such that the quantum randomness disappear after knowing these variables. Okay. So this was somehow his proposal, okay? He was not, uh, again, he was not writing any prediction against quantum theory. He was saying, let's look for this alternative theory, which is more satisfactory, and where this randomness is simply a consequence of lack of knowledge. I mean, uh, perhaps this, this was also why not so many physicists cared about uh, Einstein, this program by Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, because in the, they didn't want to falsify the theory. They simply wanted to find a better theory. But I mean, if you are a physicist and you want to publish papers, you have a theory which already works well. I mean, you don't care about any other possible theory, okay? So I guess this is why people didn't pay much attention to that. But it wasn't until 64 that, I mean, this was a, a really a, a, a seminal work, I mean, by John Bell, where, I mean, he spent some time thinking about the consequences of having this theory a la Einstein and quantum mechanics, and he realized that the two theories were in, incompatible, okay? so it. If you believe in Einstein, uh, uh, Podolsky, and Rosen um, <laughs> postulates, it was impossible to find a theory compatible with quantum mechanics. Okay, so it was simply impossible. It's not a theory that is covering quantum mechanics and giving you a more satisfactory answer, but it's a theory which is incompatible. Okay, so you can make an experiment and see who is right, Einstein or quantum mechanics. And this is something good because now scientists can care about this and then can go to the lab and see what ha what's happening there. Okay. And this was given because, well, I mean, I'm introducing this terminology, okay? So he observed, John Bell, that there are some things called Bell inequalities that are satisfied by all these theories a la Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, and these inequalities are violated by quantum mechanics, okay? So for the first time, you have something that is called a Bell inequality, that is something that you can test in the lab. So if you see that these inequalities are violated, quantum mechanics is correct. And all these theories a la Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen are wrong. So now, then people, I mean, I would say they, they were interested by this, and they tried to make some experiments. I mean, the, perhaps the best experiment at that time was, or the most conclusive experiment was performed by Alana Spain in 82, where he proved that the EPR program was wrong because these inequalities were violated, so we had to accept quantum, quantum, quantum mechanics, okay? Which means that these dice, behaving in this very weird way, exist and are there to be manipulated, okay? So, this is what some sort of, of introduction. Now, if I go back to, let's go back to randomness, which is the topic. What this means is that since these models a la Einstein were wrong, there is a, a randomness which is intrinsic to the theory, okay? So we cannot replace the theory for another, by another theory where this randomness is just a consequence of a lack of knowledge. So there is a sort of a form of randomness which is intrinsic to the theory, okay? Which do not have in our macroscopic world. Well, what we want to do then, our motivation was, okay, we know that this exists, how can we exploit this, okay? How can we use it? And uh, this is also because beyond fundamental issues, I mean, randomness is something that we use every day. So whenever you have, want to send a message to someone else, you have a random number generator which is useful to encrypt the message, okay? I mean, randomness is good to encrypt because it's something that is hard to predict, okay? And also when you have to simulate physical, biological system, you use randomness. Even when you have your pin and things like this, I mean, it's good to have a random pin or, or whatever, okay? So you see that randomness is not only a fundamental concept, but it's practical. Okay, and this is, I mean, 
Now, after this introduction, let's say I'm going to tell you about what we proved. Okay, I'm not going to enter the details, but I'm going to tell you our claims. Okay, and this was collaboration with, again, Pironi and Massar and all these people who are in the Curious Monroe group in, in, in the States. So basically, the question we wanted to solve is here. Okay, so you understand this job, you understand what we solved. Okay, so you see this, probably you know this uh, character, Dilber, okay, who is walking, and then it, they have in this, they have a, a random number generator. Okay, which, well, it doesn't look pretty random in a way, okay? But of course, this is a problem. Are you sure that's random? Well, this is the problem with randomness. You can never be sure, okay? <laughs> I mean, this is, I think it's very, I mean, I'm very, I was very happy when a colleague of mine, Valerius Scarani, sent me this joke because it's perfect for, for, the, for the presentation. <laughs> so what we want to do is really to guarantee that something is random. Would you see, classically, I mean, even after reading this joke, you see that it's something, at least, which seems unclear, okay? So what are the known solutions? Well, they have classical random, standard classical random number generators. But of course, we know that this is only random because of lack of knowledge. There is no intrinsic randomness which is used there. Okay. Well, they say, oh, no, no, but the, I, I know some guys are making some quantum random number generators. Okay. And well, there are. Okay. And the the mechanism basically, I mean, you can understand by this simple uh, uh, ex experiment. Let's say. Okay. So what they do basically, they produce single photons, they go into a bin roar with transmittivity one half, so they can take this path and this path with probability one half, and you detect the clicks. And this is the way you generate the random numbers, okay? <coughs> so either classical or, or quantum, these solutions for random number generator have three problems, okay? The first one is certification. So even class, both classical and quantum, what you do, you satisfy that something is random using certain statistical tests. So what you do, you generate many random numbers, and you look for patterns in these random numbers, okay? So you remember the previous example, the guy was saying nine, 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 nine. We believe that this is not random. Why? Because you see a clear pattern. It's nine and then nine and nine and nine. So the pattern, everybody can see that there is a pattern there, okay? So these statistical tests, what they do, they take long sequences and they see that there is a pattern there. If there is a pattern, the sequence probably is not random. If there is no pattern, they cannot tell you more, okay? Well, there is no pattern. Whether it's random or not, it's not clear, okay? But this is what people use. I mean, you go to NIST, the National Institute for Standard and Technology. This is what they tell you. Use this test. Okay. <laughs> well, problems. I mean, there exist classical systems that pass this randomness test. Okay. And classical systems, in the end, all the randomness is based on the lack of knowledge, but they are of deterministic nature. So, can you really certify the presence of randomness using these tests? And now, if we care about quantum uh, quantum solutions. If you certify that your quantum solution is random using tests that are satisfied by classical systems. How can you convince someone that you are using a quantum property? Okay? And you are using something that is satisfied by classical system. How can I tell how can I even tell you that listen, I'm using something quantum? Well, prove it to me, okay? <coughs> well, this is the first problem. Then the second problem is about privacy. In many applications you want private random uh, randomness, okay? So I always put the same example. So imagine you have a casino, virtual casino, and you want to buy a random number generator, you come to me. And I know you have a virtual casino, and I have a very good random number generator, say, even quantum. So before you come to me, I generate the random numbers, and I copy them into a classical memory, and I send you the classical memory, OK? A very big classical memory. So you go to your place, you generate the random, the numbers. And they look pretty random to you, of course, because they were generated with a very good random number. So I'm waiting for the moment when you put the numbers into your casino, and then I get all your money. Why? Well, the numbers are random to you, but they are not random at all to me. Okay, so you want randomness that is random to anybody, or you want private randomness. Okay, and the third thing is device independent. Okay, so all the solutions that exist up to now crucially rely on the details of the implementation. So in the previous example, what I tell you is that single photons, so I require single photons, have to be sent to, into a mirror with transmittivity one half. So this transmittivity is not one half; the randomness is, is sacrificed, and then I am detecting the clicks in the detectors. Okay. So if you have imperfections in all these, this gives problems in the randomness generation. So we want a solution where you can you don't have to rely on the details. Okay. So these are the problems. So what you can if you took if you now take the randomness that comes from quantum theory, you can make some devices not in the way it has been used. Uh, random uh, quantumness has been used up to now. So you have to do something different, and you can use to generate randomness which is certifiable, private, and device independent. Okay, so I think this is a novel application of quantum physics to solve a task, this randomness certification, which is unclear in, in the cl using classical techniques. And the way we do it is the following. 
you take these of those two of these two dices and you throw them many times and you prove that you have this weird quantum correlation among these dices okay <coughs> and basically you check that these two dices violate those conditions that were falsifying the EPR program okay the classical conditions for by Einstein Podolsky Rosen so if you falsify those conditions you are sure that what you are seeing is intrinsically quantum and is producing intrinsic quantum randomness okay so somehow you take those fundamental issues for from uh, Einstein Podolsky and Rosen and Bell and all these discussions and I take them to solve a practical problem which is the generation of randomness which is certifiable private and device independent okay so I will skip this part and the nice thing is that this is theory but you can even go to the lab and certify the generation of randomness so we went to Chris Monroe in, in the States and they have an experiment remember this is what I want to do I want to have these two separate dices where I make something and I get a result and from that construct a randomness okay so the way I mimic this in an experiment well they had two quantum particles in two separate labs and they could make measurements here and here and by making these measurements we could certify that these two uh, quantum particles were given random results okay so we could really use our theory to certify that in an experiment we were generating 42 new random bits okay so I want just to conclude with two uh, things so the first thing is okay this is within quantum mechanics okay now let's be more speculative and I even forget about quantum mechanics okay I'm trying to be more general more speculative perhaps less rigorous okay so there is something that in, quant in that any physics accepts which is the no signaling principle so if I do something here uh, someone who is very distant apart cannot immediately notice the effect okay why because this would allow me to send information instantaneously so if I can do something here and the moderator immediately sees the effect I can signal to him okay so this is called the no signaling principle we all believe that this happens in reality so there is a nice paper where it was shown that if you observe no locality which is the violation of those inequalities I told you before and you believe that the world is deterministic then you can signal okay so this is a fact okay this bell inequality violation these quantum dices have been observed okay this is a fact so if you believe that this the world is deterministic you have to believe that information can propagate instantaneously okay so it's a matter of choice you can choose to abandon determinism and then it's random or you can say that things propagate instantaneously it's up to you okay we physicists believe that this is impossible the fact that you can uh, propagate information faster than any finite velocity we believe that this is impossible so we, so we abandon determinism and we buy randomness but it's a matter of choice it's a random choice that you well not random you can <laughs> you can freely choose what you want to to accept okay now if you want to be even more speculative okay no locality has been observed but in no locality for this bell test you need to choose among different settings so in the ultimate limit you can test you can think of some tests where these quantum dices you have to make some choices and they are made by humans okay so you can even think I mean now I'm going to quite slightly fast but in the end it's just free will plus determinism which implies no signaling so you you will again it will be a choice between these three different concepts again up to you either you think that everything what I'm going to do is predetermined or the world is random or there is faster than light communication so me I prefer to abandon this okay and believe that there is some intrinsic randomness in the theory and the last question is well maybe I, it was kind of fast okay but I would tell you imagine now you have this virtual casino and you come to me and of, okay, you have to believe you don't know much about quantum physics but I can tell you listen I have two devices okay I have this it can be cl classical or quantum one of the existing devices and then you say why is it random you say because I pass all statistical randomness tests okay and it has this price and they say well there are some weird guys that they have tell me that they have another device which is based on these Bell inequalities and there may even devices which do not pass the statistical randomness test but they violate these inequalities for testing the intrinsic quantum randomness okay but this costs twice this one okay I mean which device is more random well I would buy this okay but I think this well this is my free I mean my free choice okay but again but I think I'm saying this to say that I believe this is a new approach to randomness okay so for the first time you can certify the randomness something that I believe it was not possible using these uh, techniques okay that was all thank you for your time.